Hey, welcome. This is your host, Clint, and this is Off and Beat, episode Trace. As I have to do for legal purposes, for disclaimers, I am not responsible for anything I say or do or acknowledge or opinionate on this show at any time anything I say as a adult male I am not responsible remember that <sighs> why did why does I should say as my great English teacher 10th grade let's say why does low Nas X Play both sides of the fence. Well, it's because he plays devil's advocate. God, not one of my strongest ones, but you know, every man has his weak moments in life. Right, Deshaun Watson? My week's been great. Today I went to my sister's birthday dinner on my one day off. And I'll tell you something that really frustrates me. So we went to the Marriott Diner. Pretty local spot. Number one diner in Georgia. Number three in the world. And for some reason the menu just gets bigger and bigger and bigger every time we go. I don't know if you've ever been to Married to Diner, but the one thing that place needs is a bigger fucking menu. Okay. It's about nine pages long. Nine flaps, nine pages, three for omelets, other three for surf and turf specials, and then the rest is just American. And seafood and you know Greek now not gonna lie to you I have no topic I have really on my mind for this episode I'm not melding it in but I do have a great delivery so I guess I'll just start with my Weekly poem of engagement to the world. This one is called I saw her at the mall today. Which malls are probably going to be out of business like three, four years. Um, no one actually goes to the mall because they're like, you know what? When I need some clothes, you know where I need to go to? The mall. Because there's 18 shops. And it's just a lazy guy like me who doesn't give a fuck about any clothes they have, where it comes from, what it looks like. It's about, you know what? I'll go to the mall. Because I'm not a very specific guy at all. The only thing specific about me is my punctuations at the end of connotation of executions of rhyming schemes that I don't really rhyme. But as long as you say you're a writer and you write things, people all of a sudden think everything you touch is Midas and you're gold. And then bitches want to come digging for it. Anyways, so back to the poem. I saw her at the mall today. By yours only, me. Oh. <coughs> 
I saw you when I miss you, and I love you when I kiss you. I saw you on your birthday. I forgot your gift, so I handheld. The weeks turn into months, and months turn into decades. At least that's what it feels. Moments I don't save to keep the spontaneity when I crave the presence of her smile. Smells like Bath and Body Works. I look at her memories in Snapchat with regularity. It typically consists of us in a bath learning how her body works. Damn. Sorry. I wonder if she daydreams about me when she's just eating lunch. Cause I skip lunch just to keep my body in shape in case she wants to meet me on a hunch. I'm not the kind of guy that asks someone what they've been up to. But if it were up to me, she would be my boo and not ghost me. It's been almost eight months since I've been able to kiss her. Haven't touched a girl since because I don't want to lead anyone on. I just want to try and close together and reminisce her mind triggers. Of that time at Kohl's when I got my first heart on. At that time in Kohl's, I got my first heart on. In the pants I was trying to try on in front of her. It wasn't even about the sexual experience, but she did pleasure till I came in my underwear. It was all her surrenderance of her body under the clothes that I wear, her tenacity to make me happy, spread in so many other aspects, made me want to always return the favor to make her feel special to me. She gained my ultimate respect. Man, I love her. I'll say it. I ain't gunshot to the bullet. Already has grazed my face, but the heat is so pressed I need a rag on my face just to cool it. Update this Saturday, I just saw her today. Imagine hugging her made me feel good like it was the first time we touched. Nostalgia streaming through my body in memoriam of what we're not. It felt great to see her, just to talk and get the clothes I never needed to begin with, but it was worth every penny, getting shit at JC Penney's. Chit-chatting in line, making her laugh, made me feel elated like a 19-year-old drunk girl off Henny. On her birthday, it felt good seeing her wear her sister's flannel. <sighs> Struggling to fit into her clothes, Man, the things we have in common these days are way too many. She looked beautiful as ever with her goofy laugh that never left. I just hope it's sooner than later the next time I get to taste her breath. That's really sad and pathetic. Really, when you break all that down, but it's, um, it's amazing, you know? The mall can... Endless possibilities, like a Chinese buffet on Christmas, right? Or it's like you get a Subway. Endless possibilities. Dress your own sandwich how you like it. Eat fresh. You know, the only thing you got to worry about, if you're eating Subway, by the way, um, don't finger a girl after you eat Subway because you don't want to give her a yeast infection, as any genuine man should know. That's why I refuse Subway at all costs, because eat fresh may cause the, you know, dangle in flesh. But, neither here nor there. I just want to end on one little note. Something that's very close to my heart. Many things are very apparent in the world today. You know, sometimes, some days, someone needs you. Right, someone you care about, someone maybe your whole life has been there for you, type of thing. They're a strong person, you know. They could be a parent of yours, could be a good friend of yours that you always viewed as strong. Someone who never emotional, someone who never really says what's going on. They keep it moving, and when they see you, they ask about you. 
next time you see that person, and next time you think they don't need any help, you're probably right. Because you're probably the fucking pussy ass bitch who needs the help because you're overthinking about how someone else needs help but really you need help with the fact that you don't always need help but you need help trying to counteract the fact that you don't need help which really means you need help. Moral of the story is stop overthinking. This is the end of Often Beat or since it's the outro, Beating Off Episode 3. I'm struggling to find the record button to stop recording. There it is.